Today we're looking at a new professional grade microphone from Godox, the Godox BDSM3. This is Godox's first attempt at a professional grade microphone. And I think as a first attempt, it's pretty good. And all the audio you're gonna hear in the first part of this video is coming from a microphone that I think is a pretty close competitor to what the BDSM3 is, and that is the Sennheiser MKE 600. And they have a number of overlapping features, so I thought this would be a good one to give you an audio comparison. And in full disclosure, Godox did send out this microphone for the purpose of making this video, but all opinions are my own and no animals were harmed in the making this video. Now, when you get the BDSM3, what you're gonna find in the box is is a reasonably simple affair. You're just gonna find the microphone, you're going to find a microphone clip, you're going to find a USB-C charging cable, and you are going to find the instructions and the little foam wind muff. So it's fairly straightforward, nothing fancy there, no carrying pouch or anything like that. Now, when it comes to the features on the microphone, it has a number of pretty cool features and functions. And the first one is that it has a built-in battery. So it has a battery that can last 220 hours. Now what this battery allows you to do is it allows you to use it on devices that do not provide what is called phantom power to power the microphone. So you charge up that battery and you can just plug this into sort of any regular camera or any recording device that does not provide phantom power, and just by holding down the power switch and turning on the microphone, the microphone will power itself for up to 220 hours. Now, this switch where the power switch also acts as a 10 decibel pad if you need it. And essentially what that'll do is that will reduce the gain or the volume coming from the microphone into whatever device you're using by 10 decibels. So this can be really useful if you've got a device, like my Fuji cameras have pretty strong preamps, and sometimes I find that microphones actually send too strong a signal into the camera, even when I've got it turned all the way down. So this gives you an extra 10 decibels of leeway if you're in that situation and you need it. So if your camera has got two hot preamps in it, or if you're in a very loud environment, you just need to enable that, that's gonna knock down the signal by 10 decibels. Now, just above that, we've got a little switch which is a high pass filter. What that's gonna do is that's gonna knock down or reduce the volume of frequencies below 75 hertz. And 75 hertz, I think, was a pretty good place to choose. It is roughly when I actually edit my audio where I kind of put my filter in. So if you enable that, that's going to uh, sort of disable or get rid of or reduce some of the low sounds like a uh, rumbling trucks going by or in a busy city or wind noise. It also can be useful if you've got somebody who's got a really bass heavy voice and it's just making the sort of signal and the sound of their voice kind of muddy and you're losing some of the detail. You can just enable that and it will just kind of clean that up and just give a little bit more clarity. Now, just above that, we have what is called the high frequency boost. And essentially what that does is that gives you greater clarity in the higher frequencies in situations where uh, maybe you're using the wind muff. This one is pretty transparent, the black one, the foam one that comes with it. But if you're using like a furry one or you're using sort of one of the big blimps or something like that, they do have a tendency to sort of knock down those higher frequencies. So instead of dealing with that in editing, if you just kind of want to use the stuff sort of right out of the microphone or right out of the camera, all you got to do is enable that high frequency boost and that's just going to brighten up the audio a little bit. Now the microphone itself is incredibly well built. It feels pro, it feels completely premium. I was sort of amazed when I actually looked inside and actually looked at the XLR connector on this. It is one of the most beautifully machined and polished XLR connectors I've ever seen. So I certainly felt like when I took this microphone out of the box, I was getting a professional grade or professional quality microphone as far as the build goes at least. And as I said, all the audio you've heard so far has just been coming out of the MKE 600. Now we're gonna switch over to the Godox VDS-M3 and that's gonna give you an audio comparison of how this microphone compares to the Sennheiser microphone. Now we're onto the Godox VDS-M3 and I think there's a couple things that are gonna jump out at you about the sound of this microphone. And the first thing is it has a very smooth and very natural tone to it. I think it does sound very, very good. I think you're also gonna notice it doesn't have quite the same in-your-face, low-end bass response that you actually get out of the Sennheiser microphone. Now, whether you like that or dislike that is really more personal preference. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other, but I'm just pointing out that there's definitely a difference there and you definitely will notice it. 
Now, the other thing you're going to notice is when it comes to how my voice is sounding and how much of, of my voice you're hearing bouncing off the walls and the reverberation in the room coming back into the microphone, you're going to find that you're going to get a fair bit more of that in the Godox mic than you do the Sennheiser mic. Now, I'm just going to give you some off-axis rejection samples so you can directly compare the Godox VD-SM3 to the Sennheiser MKE600. And I'm just going to play some white noise at the front of the microphone, then as I bring it around to the side, you should hear the volume of that noise decrease. And really what we're looking for is the more that that sound is decreased when we go to the side, the better job the microphone is doing of rejecting that sound that we don't want. Now I'm going to give you a couple sound samples with the different filters enabled. So the first one we're going to enable is the high pass filter, and this is going to reduce all the frequencies below 75 hertz. Now with the 75 hertz high pass filter enabled, you're not going to see a huge difference in the sound of my voice. This is really going to be of a benefit more when there's sort of wind noise or truck noise or low level rumbling, but it probably will clean up the low bassiness of my voice and just give it a little bit more clarity, a little bit more detail, but the effect is going to to be very subtle. Now I've disabled the high pass filter and I've enabled the high frequency boost. So this should give me a little bit more clarity, a little bit more sparkle, a little bit more detail in my voice. Once again, it's going to be a very subtle effect. It's not something that's going to be dramatic and ruin your audio. Now I've got the high pass filter and the high frequency boost on. So this is how it sounds with both of them on. I think the only time you'd really use this is when you're in sort of really windy conditions. You've got this thing in sort of a wind mup, but you're still getting some rumbling through from the wind and you also need to boost the high frequencies to compensate for the fact that those high frequencies are being knocked down by the wind protection, then you might use both of these things. Now we're back on the default settings and this is how I would probably use this microphone most of the time. Now probably for me the most exciting thing about this microphone is the fact that Godox is having a try at professional level audio. And if you see what they've done in lighting and the way they brought prices down and have innovated and have kind of made professional lighting and high quality lighting available to people that normally couldn't afford it. I'm really hoping that we see the same thing out of them with their audio products. And in many ways, the what Godox is all about is kind of what this channel is all about, which is getting the best in photo and video with the gear that you can afford or the gear that you already have. So if that's something you're into, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification.